We're outside of Rogers Centre on Bremner where you can see the mounted unit have now arrived ahead of tonight's Leaf game just down the street. And sadly, vehicles being used in attacks are the present day weapon of choice, according to threat and risk, risk experts. Now, outside of the Rogers Centre, you'll notice these concrete barriers. They're put in place to protect the public, the thousands of people who stream in and out of the ballpark. Over here, you'll notice these benches. They got a great view of the CN Tower, but they also double as concrete barricades protecting the public coming in and out of the aquarium, out of the CN Tower, from any vehicles which might mount the curb. Now, similar barricades are in place tonight outside of Maple Leaf Square, just down the road inside the ACC late this afternoon MLSC confirming that extra security measures are in place both inside and outside of the arena and extra roads are being closed now today I spoke with one former agent with CSIS who says measures like this are fantastic for large-scale events though they're not always targeting just large-scale events and these types of incidents are almost impossible to protect the public from I don't think uh, people sitting in a cafe on, on, you know, Young and Finch is a big event, right? You can certainly block off, you know, if, if the Leafs were to win the cup, which they're not going to do. Anyhow, but if they were to win the cup, and you, know, you could block off the main, main routes into the Stanley Cup parade, right? That's a big event. Or the Blue Jays kind of thing, or, you know, Santa Claus parade. But how big is Toronto? How many, how many intersections are there in Toronto? You can't block it all off. You might want to block some of the iconic places, all like maybe City Hall and things like that. But, you know, you, you simply don't have the resources. In North City, you don't want to live in a police state, right? You can't block every street off, so you're, you're left with the possibility that, uh, as, the, as the groups are saying, do it where you can. And this person, you know, whatever his motive, has chosen to do this on a sunny afternoon, Monday afternoon in Toronto, and take out people that were innocently walking down the street or, or sitting having a coffee or whatever. Edmonton, September 2017, four people were rammed by a suspected terrorist. October 2014 in Quebec, two members of the Canadian forces are hit and killed by a vehicle driven by a man the RCMP have called an ISIS-inspired extremist. Overseas in Europe, brazen attacks have claimed the lives of dozens, from a Christmas market in Berlin to London Bridge, Barcelona's La Rambla, the Bastille Day atrocity in Nice. Similar scenes have also played out along New York's Hudson River bike path. All of these tragedies, according to former CSIS analyst Phil Gursky, are almost impossible to stop. It's a tort, they're impossible. Uh, unless you actually, it's, it's by somebody that you're already following because he's on your radar, uh, or you've got a tip off from somebody, uh, it's virtually impossible because A, it can happen anywhere at any time, as we saw in Edmonton, as we saw you know, outside of Montreal in 2014. And B, uh, the weapon of choice is a car. It's a rental truck. It's a van. I mean, how do you police that? that um, if, unless the person is already uh, being monitored or for surveillance by CSIS or the RCMP or law enforcement, attacks of this nature are actually pretty impossible to stop. You say to those who are sitting at home tonight who are fearful of living their lives, who are fearful of going in the streets, who know that simply, you know, the city police, they can't barricade and protect every street corner uh, in Toronto. My simple message, and I've been saying this for years, uh, even when I'm still at CSIS, um, you got to live your life. You can't live your life thinking this is going to be the day when somebody takes you over the rental van. You can't live that way. Sure, anything can happen. I can slip on a sidewalk. I could get hit by a drunk driver. I could get hit by a meteorite. I don't want to sound facetious here, but... You know, if we start saying we're not going to do things because there's a one in a bazillion chance that the guy's going to run us over intentionally, then you wouldn't leave your house. And I don't think, I don't think as Canadians we want to do that. Ogurski adds in his professional opinion, this appears to be a deliberate attack to him, though it's important to note that we still don't know the motive behind today's incident this hour.